So you want to start a blog. That's great. And no, let me stop your thoughts right now. Blogs are not a dying industry. In fact, if that was true, then why does pretty much every successful business owner or every successful website have a blog on it? Let me tell you, it's not that blogs aren't useful anymore. It's that people who are blogging are following methods that we used over five years ago. That doesn't work. Blogs are a fabulous place to connect with your audience in a different way than how you connect with them on Facebook or on Instagram or YouTube. I want you to think of your blog as the informational space within your digital presence, or even the central hub of where all the rest of your content stem from. My goal for you after you watch this video is to know exactly how to develop a strategy that connects all the pieces to the puzzle together. Meaning, how do you connect your blog to your Facebook? How do you connect it to Instagram? Where does YouTube fall into play? You name it. It's all this one big web of content from you. Now, I know most digital marketers, they will tell you to focus your efforts on dominating one social platform. Now, although yes, when you are building a new business online, it's important to build one piece at a time so you don't get overwhelmed. But I don't agree that you should only do Facebook's posts per se. Think about it. When you're laying on your couch, you're bored and you're on your phone, what are you doing? You're probably just like me, jumping from Instagram to Google to Facebook to Pinterest to YouTube to LinkedIn and back to Instagram. And sometimes we land on websites that we have no idea how we even got there. Anyways, so between the clicks, the swipes, and the unlimited amount of content that you can absorb online, I want to teach you how you can put your focus on reaching your audiences from all aspects in digital marketing. And that's how you'll dominate the digital world. The reality is this, we open different platforms depending on our needs. We scroll through Instagram to look at pictures or to watch short videos or really just to see what people are up to. Instagram is a platform that is used for real-time connections. Between Instagram stories, more concise captions, video clips, and tagging, you don't really see too many full conversations happening on Instagram. But with Facebook, this platform is a great way to connect when you are looking for more informational-based posts. So you have your Facebook Messenger, you have your Facebook groups, you have your business pages. Facebook is more of a text-based platform than images if you want to compare it to Instagram. Now, just between these two platforms alone, I do have to make a big point in saying that your audience will have a huge impact on if you should be using Facebook, Instagram, or even both. And to make it simple for you, if you have an audience over 50 years old, you're going to want to focus mainly on Facebook. But if your audience is anywhere below 50, you will want to focus your attention on using both of them. But remember, we want to use both of them differently. Facebook is text-based. Instagram is image-based. I almost like to say Instagram is that sneak peek into your business. Facebook gives that a little bit more in-depth information. Now, what about Pinterest? Where does Pinterest come into play? This is a great platform to use when you're showcasing your images or even infographics. Now, the difference between Instagram and Pinterest. When you're on Pinterest, people are typically searching for a specific topic, whereas on Instagram, they're following specific people. So for example, if I'm gonna redo my office, I'm gonna go to Pinterest for my inspiration. Now, I would only be going to Instagram if I knew of a specific designer whose style I like. Now, what about Google? Google is an informational platform that will direct you to find the answers to your questions. Google will lead you to different YouTube videos, to different company websites, to blogs, to Facebook accounts, to LinkedIn, you name it. Anything you want to know, Google will get you your answer. But really, when was the last time you were scrolling through Google just because you were bored? Each platform has its benefits within your digital marketing strategy, and it will come into play when you're setting up your blog. But next time, I want you to do something. Next time you see a highly successful expert in your industry, start to pay attention to what platforms they are using. When I was creating this video for you, I decided to put this theory to test for myself. I went over to one of my podcasters that I listen to pretty much on a daily, Rachel Hollis. And right now I follow her on Instagram and Spotify. I do have her on Facebook, but I don't necessarily follow her, go to her Facebook to find out what she's doing. I do that on Instagram and I listen to her podcast on Spotify. 
But I went to her website to check out her blog. And guess what? In one blog, I was directed to Pinterest. I was directed to YouTube. And I was directed to Facebook. She also is very active on LinkedIn and writes blogs two to three times per week. Now, yes, she does have a large team helping her out. But really, I'm stuck in her bubble. And that's what we need to do for you. We need to create this digital web, this digital bubble of you, your content, your voice, your message. Now, the key to dominating your digital presence is really to be everywhere your audience is. Your blog is going to be that central focus. Now, I want you to start to think of your blog pretty much as your audience's personal Google. Your blog is what will answer their questions, what is going to inspire them to take action, What is going to provide them with those small wins all while building that relationship with your audience without ever having talked to them. Now, the key to an effective blog, this is where you become the go-to place, the go-to blog whenever your audience has a question regarding your industry. So let's dive in how to actually do this. So first question I usually get, what is a blog anyways? Simply put, a blog is a tool where your audience will go read more information about a specific topic that you are the expert on. These blogs, they're typically editorial content. Um, So basically it's a long post that is gonna help position you as the expert. It's gonna help you allow to gauge with your audience, develop a really good online presence and really attract new leads, which I know as business owners, that's what we're looking for. So the next question I usually get asked is how do I blog? This question is asked honestly so often but there is no right or wrong way to blog, but there are specific strategies that I'm gonna walk you through that I want you to focus on that will ensure your audience keeps coming back for more. That is the key, getting them back for more. So I'm gonna break down four different strategies for you. So grab a piece of paper, I want you to write this down, and I'm actually gonna get you to do a quick brainstorm session or dot dot down anything that comes to mind as I'm going through this. So strategy number one, who are you talking to? This strategy is one of the most missed in marketing, which is why most marketing campaigns fail, to be honest. I get it though. You believe you can serve everyone. So you try to talk to everyone. But effective marketing is when you are so narrow on who you are talking to specifically. Now by understanding who you're speaking to is going to make your blogs that much easier to write. When you know exactly who you're talking to, it will make every other aspect of your business that much easier to run. It's incredible how many business owners skip this piece. And in my opinion, it's the key to effective marketing. So before your mind wanders, let me explain what I mean. I'm not talking about who your customers are per se. That's the obvious answer. So let's use this example. Let's say that I'm a wedding photographer. My customers are people who are getting married. That's a high level overview. But I want to get even more deeper. I want to know everything possible I can about my dream customer. Who is that dream client? Who is that dream couple that I want to photograph? I want you to be able to step into the shoes of that dream client or customer for you. This is something called an avatar or an ICA, your ideal customer avatar. When you do this, I want you to be able to picture your, that one person that you want to work with or be able to step into their shoes or really they should be like your best friend. Now I want you to imagine this for a minute. You're in your office and the door opens. You hear the voice of someone say, hello, who are they? Are they male, female? What age are they? What are they wearing? What are they looking for? What vehicle do they drive? What do they do for a living? Do they have kids? How much money do they make? What do they do for fun? What is their biggest problem that you can solve? What keeps them up at night? What books do they read? What shows do they watch? We can go on forever. You should know every single thing about them. So dot, jot that down. Figure out who is that dream customer and what is every single thing about them that you can learn. That's strategy number one. Strategy number two, this is going to be what do I blog about? This is the natural part when you know who you're talking to, the what is going to fall right into place. So let's do a brainstorm together. I want you to grab that piece of paper, grab a pen, and I want you to scribble down as many answers as possible to the following questions. I don't want you to overthink this. I just want you to write down everything and anything that comes to your mind. Are you ready? So picture that you're meeting with that dream client for the very first time. Picture that they're sitting right next to you. What questions do they have? Write down every single question 
that that dream customer would ask you on the very first time they met with you or talked to you? What questions do they have? Now, Lex, let's say that that conversation went great. You answered all their questions. You thought you did a good job. They left feeling good, but then they went home and they had a couple more questions. So they send you an email. Hey, can we hop on the phone tomorrow? I just have a few questions before I make my decision if I'm going to move forward. What questions are they asking? Think about it. What questions do you have to answer before they decide to work with you? All right, so let's say that you did a fantastic job. You closed the sale. They're now working with you. Now that you're working together, what questions do they ask? They're going to be different than the ones from the very first meeting, but write them down. What questions do they ask? And now let's say that you've worked together for a year. All of a sudden, now the job's done, project is over, great. Now what questions do they ask? Write it down. I want you to keep track of all these questions. I actually have a note on my phone. Anytime someone asks me a question, I write it down. Now I know some of the questions that you think or that you're writing down, they may seem really small or they may seem really obvious to you. But if your avatar is asking that question, it's for a reason. And remember, your avatar is the dream client that you want to work with. So by posting these questions, by putting this content out into the world, you'll be attracting more people just like him or her with these blog posts. I want you to be the creator of content that your readers will love to read. That way they'll identify you as the place to get the best information on that topic. So that's strategy number two. One, who do you talk to? Two, uh, what do you talk about? What do you blog about? Number three, How do you blog? As I said, there's no right or wrong format. It's just a matter of knowing what your audience needs to read and putting it out there in the internet world. There are a lot of great platforms that you can use to start a blog, such as WordPress or maybe even Blogger. However, if I can give you any piece of advice, it would be to make sure that your blog is connected to your main website. That way, when someone lands on your website, they can click over to your blog, check it all out and vice versa. Now, when blogging, your personality should also shine through, right? Just like you were talking to your avatar in person. This is how people will feel like they know you without ever meeting you. Now, a great tip for this is to use that microphone feature on your phone. Simply talk out loud to answer that question. That will give you the baseline for your blog and you'll get that pretty quickly. And then it's just a matter of piecing it all together. Now, if you feel like you are saying the same thing, the same point over and over to get your point across, That's a good thing. Being repetitive will help your audience remember what they read. I suggest actually repeating the main point over again at least three times within your post. Now, remember how I said Facebook was an informational platform? Your blog is 10 times that of Facebook. Your blog should be an informational packed article that ranges from 1,000 to 7,000 words. I suggest testing your audience with what length obviously grabs their attention, but for me, my sweet spot is just over that 3,000 mark. Now, P.S., to bring in Google into the equation, the more content, the more words you have within your blog, that gives Google more options to kind of go through it to figure out how to rank you higher on their platform. So longer is better. Now, what about the design? The words, yes, are only one piece of the puzzle with blogging. The design is what is going to encourage your readers to actually go through and read the content. Keeping your blog easy to read is essential. So you do this by spacing out your text, adding in different colors, changing your your font sizes, adding in images, adding videos. These should all be included within your blog. Now, this is also where you can connect other platforms and all all your platforms can start to merge. Are you ready? This is the fun part. I hope I don't lose you. But when posting images on your blog, use icons or infographics that are all the same sizes. But infographics, remember I went back to Pinterest? Infographics are great on Pinterest. But infographics are also great because they grab attention and they share a quick overview for those readers who just like to skim before they decide if they actually want to invest their time to read the full thing in depth. Infographics are great on Pinterest. So what you can do, post your blog, put in an image, link that image to your Pinterest. And then on Pinterest, you're gonna have that same image that links to your blog. You're creating backlinks, so just one to other, back and forth. 
Now, if I can make a point throughout this entire video, it's that video is queen. Across every single platform, you should be posting videos because that is the quickest way for your audience to absorb your content. They can see you, they can hear you, they can feel like they are literally with you with every blog post. I highly recommend you have a video. And to connect it to another platform, first, upload that video to YouTube. And then take that YouTube link and embed that into your blog. So at this point, you have one blog that's directing to your website, directing to your Pinterest, and directing to your YouTube. Do you see this web forming? So strategy number four, this is comes down to sharing your blog. At this stage, this is where Facebook will come into play. You have a valuable piece of content that you should be sharing with your avatar. You put time and effort into this. This piece of content should be shared across all your platforms. But let me ask you, where is that best place to post informational based info? Facebook. Post your blog link onto your Facebook page. Highly recommend it. People will start to share with share it. People will start to like it. People will start to comment on it. And when people start to engage with that post, Facebook will automatically boost it to other people and get more eyes on your post, which will get more people clicking onto your blog, which gets more people engaging with your content and then directing them to your website and going to all your different platforms. Now, if you wanted to pick it up a notch, throw some paid advertising behind your post. You do that through Facebook's ads manager. Basically, $5 a day, you say, hey, Facebook, put this in front of the exact person that I want to reach. You can actually target that dream customer that you want and put this post in front of them. And since you made the post based on a question that they specifically would have, they're going to read it. Now, lastly, where does Instagram come into play? Instagram is designed to build connection in real time. So instead of posting your blog on your Instagram account, you can create a clever caption that will encourage someone to ask a question. And from there, your answer is simple. Head on over to my blog post. I did a great post on it. You can read everything you need. But if you have over 10,000 followers on Instagram, you could do something else. You'll be able to use that link feature where you can swipe up on Instagram and it will direct them to their blog post. So if you're at this stage with your Instagram account, 100% use the swipe up feature but you can only do this if you have 10,000 followers. And from there, that's where you have this full circle with one piece of content. Let's take a look. So you go to your website, your website's linked to your blog. So then I'm, so I'm viewing your website, I click on your blog link, and now all of a sudden I'm viewing your blog. Great, one platform. Now I'm on your Instagram. I have over 10,000 followers, so I'm using that swipe up feature. I post a story that says, hey, I just posted a new blog, you should check it out. Swipe up to get access to it. They swipe up, they go to my blog. On my Facebook page, I post, hey, new blog post, blah, 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 it's all about this. Click on here to go view it. They click on it, they go to my blog post. Within my blog, I have my video, it's directing them to my YouTube. I have an image, it's directing them to Pinterest. And I can also put an image and link it to my Instagram. See this big web? I'm basically creating this big circle of all of me. Now, how do we all put it together? To make it really simple for you, what I did is I put together a checklist the exact order of what I do personally. So I'm gonna write, get you to write this down. First step, come up with your topic. Second step, shoot your video and then upload it to YouTube. Third step, write your blog post, write the actual content, the words of it. Step number four, create your graphics. If you've never used canva.com, that's where I want you to head over. Go create your graphics on Canva. Post your blog with graphics in your video. So this is the actual design of it. So design your blog, share your blog on Facebook, share your blog on Instagram. Then if you're feeling up to it, run some paid traffic behind it, boost it, put it in front of more people. That are the steps that you need to take to effectively use your blogs. Now, going back to our first strategy, knowing who you're talking to is extremely, extremely important to make this whole wheel continuously turn and continuously get the people back to your blog. So a few tips before I end this, I just wanted to remind you that first impressions are everything. Make sure that you are proofreading your stuff. Make sure that you know what image you're portraying. Using, if I have a luxury brand and I'm sitting here in sweatpants, I'm not going to be attracting the same audience. Make sure that you are dressing to impress. Make sure that you are 
not having kids scream in the background, make sure that you don't have clutter behind you, etc. Use language that your audience will relate to. Second tip I want to give you is to blog with a purpose. I've actually seen someone blog with one sentence in an image, and that is not a blog. A blog needs to be long. A blog needs to be informative. If you have nothing to say, don't blog at all. Only blog with a purpose. And when you have one great piece of content, you can repurpose that content over and over and over again. Now, call to actions at the end of your blogs is also important. Basically, your call to action can be a soft or a hard call to action. It can be something as easy as... Um, head on over to my Facebook page to check out this post. Or it could be as simple as um, click the button below to sign up for my newsletter to get more tips on whatever. Another tip is to spell check. I know I kind of mentioned this briefly before, but spell check. Spell check twice, three times. Get someone else to do it for you. There's programs out there that you can upload your blog post to to do your spell check for you. So that's like Grammarly. It's a great one to use. Now with every single blog post, I want you to have an image, at least one image, and at least one video. That is going to allow you to really, really dial in your content for your audience and really build that relationship that you want to build. Now, I'm going to end it here, but I wanted to leave you with one last thing to think about. Your goal, your goal for your blog is for when your audience walks away after they read your blog, they should feel rewarded. They should feel empowered. They should feel like they learned something new. That is your goal. And how you achieve that goal is by understanding who you're talking to, what they need to hear, make it appealing, and just share that content with as many people as possible because that one blog is going to help thousands of your dream customer if you follow the steps perfectly. But of course, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. I'm Lisa Ann across all platforms. Um, And of course, post anything below this video and I'm always happy to help. Bye for now.